uh, to this story. And sad news today from the arts world. Lindbergh has died at the age of 75 due to COVID-19. The husband and wife duo Des and Dawn has been a feature of the performing arts in South Africa since the 1960s. From those early hippie days, they went on to become icons in the entertainment industry. Well, I'm joined now by Dr. Ismail Mohammed, director of the new constitution for a management structure in South Africa. And since then, I've had a long relationship with Dawn, serving as, as a board member of the Naledi Theatre Awards, but also just uh, being very often just an advisor uh, for the work that she was doing, particularly through the Naledi thing. I had stepped down from the Naledi Awards when I took on a position in Johannesburg uh, as CEO of the Market Theatre, because there would have been a conflict of interest, but I still remained an advisor to her on, on the governance issues mm -hmm. of the Naledi Award. You, you wrote such a beautiful tribute uh, for Dawn Lindbergh, and, and you made such an interesting point that while they were front and center, uh, very popular uh, during the apartheid years, they managed to stay on side and not get into too much trouble. I, know, I noted that her uh, casting of the music Godspell was banned because she, she cast multiracial actors, but generally they, they stayed popular, they stayed um, in the limelight, but at the same time they were doing things that were hammering home messages that black audiences were really receiving. And you mentioned the song, This Land is Your Land, this land is my mm. land, and others. Tell us more about that. Yeah, I think, uh, you, know, you know, there was this, some kind of a magic to that relationship of Des and Dawn Lindbergh. Uh, they, they, in some way, were these folk stars, these heroes of the hippie, hippie era uh, from the 60s and, and the early 70s, uh, and yet they were this incredibly wonderful, clean couple that would, when they appeared on stage uh, or on, on, on television, uh, you know, singing children's songs as well. So what saw a kind of family relationship with them as well, uh, contrasted with this other kind of relationship of this young avant-garde hippie era kind of thing. But there was a deep business sense that they had about the arts, but also a deep commitment for social justice. And I recall in the 80s, Dawn was involved with a campaign uh, which called for theatres to be places of peace. Uh, not just theaters, but even community halls, community centers, wherever performances could take place to be centers of peace. And this was right at the time of the uh, state of emergency in this country. Uh, but, you know, even though her work, uh, uh, the, the Godspell was, was banned and not allowed to, to be staged in South Africa because of the, uh, it was a multiracial cast, she stated in Lesotho but came back, appealed it in the Supreme Court, uh, got the rights to perform the work, but what she did, she and Des did, is that they were anchors and pillars for fighting for non-racism in this country, and two years after the staging of that work, South African theatres opened for all races. Uh, so in, in many, many ways, she's been a light bearer, a pioneer, a mover, a shaker. Uh, and with all that, she still remains South Africa's most glamorous grandmother working <laughs> in the theatre. Yes, absolutely. She's such a sad loss. Um, and, and, you know, sad indeed that she has died from COVID-related uh, complications. Mm. And it's a really sobering reminder that this pandemic is very much still with us. We, of course, know how much COVID-19 and the lockdowns have decimated the performing arts industry. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering if you've spoken to her family, perhaps spoken to Des at all, uh, or can share with us um, your last conversations with her. I'd spoken to, to Dawn some, I think, uh, um, uh, just over a month ago. Uh, Dawn was busy writing her biography, She and Des Together, uh, and, and that she shared that with me, the draft of that, to be able to read that uh, and provide her with some input. I've, I've been receiving WhatsApp messages from her. I learned last week that uh, she was ill, and I followed information through a relative of hers uh, for the last three or four days about her status, her health status. And very early this morning, I think it was just about a few minutes after 12, that I received uh, a phone call uh, from her nephew, and I learned 
that she had passed. Uh, and, you know, within no time, I received a few more messages from other people in the theatre sector. I think D Dawn's loss is probably one of the largest that we've seen in recent times in the theatre industry, uh, simply because she was such an incredible force. Uh, you know, we work in an industry that is incredibly fragile, uh, but also in an industry where we're constantly working for recognition. And what Dawn did is that she cemented this industry together through the Nalidi Awards, and she was able to give people acknowledgement, recognition, and advance their careers. And, and all that she did with her own sense of charisma. Yes, sometimes uh, some of the things that she, she said or some of the things that she may have done may not have always been popular, but that's what made her a champion. That's what made her stand out in the crowd. What a legacy. Thank you so much uh, for sharing your memories of Dawn Lindbergh. That was Dr. Ismail Mohammed. He's a director of the UKZN Centre for Creative Arts, Dawn Lindbergh. Uh, she died yesterday. She leaves behind her husband, Des, and their sons and their families.